well as continued funding continued funding for the aquaculture veterinarian, which, you know, coordinates and oversees everything. Um, unfortunately, at the last minute, the it didn't come out of committee and get a final vote on the floor, and so it died. Um, the other bills that we had going forward each died at the money committee, either Ways and Means or House Finance. And so uh, I met last week with uh, DOA Chair um, Sharon Hurd and the new Deputy Director, both of whom are supportive of aquaculture. And um, they are supportive of the three bills that we um, had, you know, various levels of success with at this last session to uh, support them in the coming session. Um, they are also very interested in efforts to raise the uh, aquaculture program at DOA to a division level. And they see the um, Aquaculture Advisory Council that we've used as an integral part of that effort um, with you know raising raising the status of the program and have it being industry uh, involved uh, on a regular basis, formalizing that linkage between industry and the program. So uh, they are currently trying to figure out the best way strategically to address this elevation of the program and they're wanting the HAAA to take the lead on meeting with the legislators in the subject matter committees to get these bills um, up for the, the coming session, which is what I committed to do. Um, we also just in a general sense as an industry, I think need to educate and elevate our um, industry in the eyes of the legislature. There's just not many people in the ledge anymore that um, have any firsthand experience with farming, certainly not with aquaculture or even with uh, natural resource based, you know, green technologies. And so I think we, we need to, between now and the start of session, have farm visits, have just interactions with the legislature and uh, try to convey all the positives about our industry. Um, there was a, a less, a, a, you know, an effort at the Board of Land and Natural Resources recently that um, was not what we had hoped for in terms of supporting uh, um, native species um, work. And so, I, I, again, I think that we just need to do a better job on explaining the science and how aquaculture integrates closely with uh, fisheries management and, and takes the pressure off of natural fisheries. Um, one thing I wanted to mention, just um, it's not directly related to legislation, but perhaps in helping to get the more of the positive word out about our industry along the same lines that uh, Jim Wyban is doing with this Ag Tech Conference is um, the Hawaii uh, Visitor and Convention Bureau reached out to me last week. They have been approached by World Aquaculture um, Society who is interested in returning Aquaculture America to Honolulu in 2027. They've asked me to uh, write an industry letter of support to um, John Cooksey that um, coordinates the uh, World Aquaculture events um, in the next week or so, get a letter put together conveying um, our industry's interest, if there is interest, and I certainly hope there would be, our last meeting here was in 2020, and unfortunately, the 
you know, the week of the conference was when the COVID really started taking a hold and um, we lost maybe a quarter of planned attendance. But despite that, the World Aquaculture Society is still interested in returning. I think that would be a great venue for us to promote our industry um, nationally and, and even globally. And hopefully uh, those efforts will uh, resonate with the local legislature in recognizing the importance of our industry and the part we play in the national and global industry. So. Uh, if your individual organizations would be interested in things like farm tours or facility tours, um, that always makes these uh, meetings more interesting that attendees can attend a tour before or after. And um, those are the sorts of things that I'd like to be able to uh, mention in concept to John Cooksey that we would like to do as we have tried to do in the past. Um, but that's coming. So I just wanted to let you know, or that's being proposed. We have to win it. I'm sure other cities are trying to lobby to have it go to their city. So we need to show that we really want it to come back to Hawaii. Um, but first matters first is we need all of us to pull together to get these uh, three measures, specific bills before the legislature next year, and whatever options any of you can come up with to support work workforce development. There are a number of issues of underway right now, but um, this is something that needs to be ongoing and expanded if we're gonna have a workforce in this competitive market. I think that covers what I was planning to say. Thanks so much, Ron. Um, yeah, and if I could provide just a little more context, you know, um, you know, so this was it, this is what happened this legislative session, right? The um, collaborative and HAAA established nine priorities. Um, many of them were heard as bills, which um, you know we consider a win. Um, and the steering committee got together and decided, okay, so for this upcoming um, session, we should really kind of condense the list or put it into some kind of summary or overarching plan that we could work with HDOA on um, and get industry feedback on. Um, so, so that's what you'll see here is this um, condensed version. And Let's see. So, um, and thanks, Ron, for that information about the Aquaculture America hoping to come to Honolulu in 2027. That's exciting news. Um, okay. And so uh, we've reached the point where we would like to hear from you. Um, and uh, while we coordinate the breakout groups, um, our Sea Grant team is going to review the instructions. So I'll hand it over to Annie or Darren. Mm -hmm. Hey, aloha my kako, everyone. Um, Jean is going to be dividing us up into small groups. Um, and I'll also, I'll also pop this list of uh, things in the chat for you um, to refer to as well. Um, but in the small groups, um, we want to ask that you choose uh, somebody to take notes and someone who will report out to the larger group. And if we can... Um, look at comments, questions, and recommendations for the um, draft 2024 priorities uh, that was listed um, and see if there's anything missing, um, if there's any anything that's um, impacting your business that's not represented in the priorities or would benefit from industry collaboration um, as well as um, recommendations for next steps. Um, so I'll go ahead and... Um, place that outline in the chat so you have it to refer to um, as a group. Mahalo, Annie. And I see Maria has a question before we go into groups. I'm sorry, I should have asked. Yeah, what questions do you have? Exactly. Thank you, Maria. Hi, Aloha. Um, it's not so much a question. I just wanted to make a suggestion. Um, 
So I'm with the Pacific Aquaculture and Coastal Resources Center, which I think a lot of you guys know me, particularly in industry folks. But for those of you who don't, we're with UH Hilo. We are actually a very strong force within UH for aquaculture training, extension. And in fact, we do regional programs as well throughout the Pacific Islands. We also have the only really truly workforce training program within the UH system for aquaculture. Um, we also have funding from two USDA grants to work on policy and legislative issues um, and, and writ large, also things like best management practices. And to that end, we've actually, you know, we've hired a Rhiannon Chandler Yao, who I think you guys may know is a, a lawyer who has considerable expertise in policy issues, not just for the commercial aquaculture side, but also for the restorative aquaculture side. We are more than happy to support group efforts. However, I think that given the strength of PACRAC and I think because we need to have some represent re representation from other UH units, I'd like to suggest that there be a seat on the steering committee for UH Hilo and also for Maui College. Maui College unfortunately tends to get ignored too, but they have a very strong aquaponics and uh, workforce training program. So I'd like to propose that there would be at least two more positions on the steering committee if we're gonna be uh, you know, trying to combine our forces in an effective way to support these supposedly joint initiatives. So that's that's all I had to say, but I'd like to put that out there because we do want to support. Thank you. Thanks, Maria. Yes, such a great idea to expand um, the steering committee. And um, let's see, we'll be in touch with you on that. And does anyone else have any other questions before we or comments before we go into our breakout discussions. Um, I'm going to put up this slide, which has the draft priorities as well as the, the discussion questions. So if you could take a screenshot for your own use or get your phone out and take a photo um, so that you'll know what you'll be discussing in the next few minutes, um, that would be great. Um, and then, um, so while you're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and open the breakout rooms and feel free to join your rooms. And um, let's see, let me do a time check. It's 1222. So we'll give about 15 minutes for discussion, and then we'll bring you all back um, to do a recap and, and a larger group discussion. Okay, so please take a photo or a screenshot. And I'm going to go ahead and open the rooms. And you can just go ahead and click join. Gina, it doesn't appear I have a join button. Okay. Because maybe because I maybe because I jumped on early. Okay. Or late. <laughs> okay. Thanks for joining, Jen. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Let me just move this over. Um, there's a way to put you in a room, I'm sure. Sorry, I haven't done this in a while, so I'm like, okay. okay. Here yeah, I'm not, I'm not so good at two, not Zoom either. Three. Here we go. Thanks. Sure. Hi, Dr. Lee. Did you want to join a meeting room? Sorry, uh, <clears throat> Jane. What's you know? I I get lost. Right? You talk about the. You break in the room. What room you you have assigned it? How many room you for people oh. to choose? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I so I, um, I I think I probably I joined late or I didn't hear that or. Oh, the... okay. Yeah. Do you have an option to join? Like, is there a join button? Uh yeah, but I didn't. Yeah. So, oh, there you go. Aloha, Mark. So Mark, we've just gone into breakout rooms to discuss the priorities on the slide and these discussion questions. 
Um, let me see if I can assign you to a room. Sorry, I'm so late. No problem at all. <laughs> All right, click join when you are ready.
All right, welcome back everyone. Let's see, here we go. Hope you had ample time for discussion. And uh, now we'd love for you to share um, what happened in your breakout groups. Um, let's start with the room that is uh, David, uh, John Navi, Kim, and iPhone. <laughs> do, we, do we want me to go with this? Sure, Kim, um, let's go with it, thanks. <laughs> So uh, I feel like we're, we're the, the students that weren't paying attention, but we had a lot of questions. Um, so one question we had is, is you know, why the legislative approach to some of these things? And, you know, is there a backup approach if legislation isn't necessarily the best tool to move it forward? Um, we wanted a little bit more clarification between the advisory committee um, that's being proposed as as in relations to the, um, sorry, I'm talking about the advisory council um, in relation to the current advisory committee. Um, does the current committee supersede the advisory council? Will the council or the current committee grow into the council? Just a little bit more clarification on the relationship between those two. Um, we agree that we should support diagnostic facilities. This is a huge deal, I can tell you, for our growers. Um, but I guess just a little bit more clarity on what it is that we're trying to support. Are we trying to support making sure it stays with DOA? Are we trying to support make sure they continue to have enough funding? Um, what exactly is it? What does it mean to support a, a disease diagnosis, the diagnostic facility? Um, and, you know, what is the role of Department of Ag here in terms of, you know, it, should they be pushing some of these initiatives versus doing it through legislature? Um, should, should they be funding these initiatives? What, what's the role of DOA here um, as, a, as a lead agency? Um, and, and I think we need to be conscious of, this was discussed, do we, do we have the political clout to make this happen? Um, so these are things that so we had a lot more questions than answers. <laughs> yeah, really wonderful questions, actually. And um, I might I might be able to address a couple of things. And I know there are people on the call who can address. So um, in terms of, you know, the legislative approach, um, that is such a great question. You know, this uh, support aquaculture workforce development. Um, for example, there's been a lot of support. Um, Dan Duger's on the call. Um, there are other options for uh, asking the ledge for money um, because we have things like Good Jobs Hawaii that has a lot of funding right now. We have partnerships with the, all the um, UH system um, and helping to support workforce development. Um, but we did think that having it on a legislative agenda was important because we do think workforce uh, always gets the attention of legislators. Um, so, so yes, I, I, I do think that not all of them need to be pushed through the ledge. So, so that's a really great question. Um, the clarification between the advisory committee versus the steering committee of the Hawaii Aquaculture Collaborative. So, um, you know, Ron, you might be able to speak to the differences, but the, the steering committee of this particular group um, is an industry council that really just guides our agenda and our priorities. The Aquaculture Advisory Council, I think, is something more formal through the state. Um, but uh, Ron, do you want to address that? Or perhaps John Corbin as well might be able to talk to that? I'll defer to Ron. Previously, when there was. OK, well, I will talk, and then you can correct me when I'm wrong. <laughs> um, Previously, when there was an aquaculture advisory council, were appointed by the governor and approved by the the legislature, and so it was a formal a formal situation, and I think that's what would be expected again. The um, when the bill started off this last session, the the legislator that wrote it up didn't understand the diversity of the industry and, and that there will be five positions on the committee. 
um, we got that amended um, to 11 positions to acknowledge the diversity of the industry. But then the legislators um, started specifying what they wanted included in the 11 positions, and it would include someone from the restaurant industry and someone from processing and, and so that it represents all the aspects that, um, lead aquaculture development going forward. And I think that's one thing that we could really influence as we, uh, you know, before it becomes bill again as to what we feel would be the broadest representation um, but I think it would be, it would be much smaller than the steering committee. It, it would be, I think 11 is probably as much as we could push it to as far as diversity, you know, maybe 13, I don't know, but, and then, um, it would be formally part of, I guess, under the chair's office would be what we would try to have it positioned and, um, Again, in the prior version of this, there were seats for DLNR, for DBED. Um, and so I don't know if those you know, positions would occur again. Um, but I think the what we would try to do is make sure that the majority um, membership would be industry. And I, I think that that's what the chair felt comfortable with in the discussions the other day. Um, but we would want, you know, each of the sectors represented, we wouldn't want it to be all fish or all shellfish or all algae, but, you know, to represent the diversity of our industry and, and representation from the various islands. Yes. Thanks so much, Ron. Uh, John, do you have anything to briefly add? Uh, maybe just a, a few words. Uh, yes, it was formally established by the legislature, and 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 uh, the aquaculture development uh, program provided staff support. Uh, that is key to this these kind of advisory bodies. Is you have to have strong staff support, and I can tell you it's a lot of work to to really have good good meetings, and and uh, so that 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 would be. Uh, a definite uh, must if uh, if this was to go go forward. Um, our council even had county representation. It was a very large group, and uh, initially there were, was a lot to be done legislatively and and issue wise. And then it gradually got less and less, and you know attendance suffered and and so on. Uh, and uh, Basically, the decision was made. The HAA at that time was a, was a, a strong organization, uh, 100 members, uh, very active annual conferences, and that role of advising government would would uh, would be from the HAA and, and its membership and leadership. And so uh, we just we uh, uh, stopped uh, stopped having the the council uh, within government. That would be my comment. Thanks so much, John. And, um, you know, so great questions, Kim and group one. Um, what I think we'll do in the interest of time is get through all the feedback from the rooms and then we'll put together um, a document that responds to all the questions that you are coming up with. Um, but I do think uh, um, it'll probably take us a week to get those answers to you all. Um, but let's move to room two, uh, Annie. Janae, Mark, and Ron. And Fred. Oh, and Fred, thank you. Do you guys have a spokesperson for that room? Annie, do you wanna provide a brief summary? Um, I know Janae had to hop off, um, but maybe I can, it's a little bit loud over here, sorry. Um, I can just add um, what she had to add. Um, she added in the chat and then maybe Ron can jump in um, that she was going to um, go ahead and work with HGOA to look at um, the details for diagnostic lab. 
And then I'll let, let Ron add what he had to add. Yeah, so we spent your time just trying to clarify um, how to stabilize the, the veterinary program to find the, you know, the, the working relationship between CTAR and Department of Ag um, and the continued funding. Um, so it, Janae said that the college and Department of Ag could try and work um, over the next month or so in coming up with a white paper that could help inform further discussions on this topic. Um, and I can't, yeah, that was the, the what I remember from the, the lab discussion. Um, we didn't cover everything, you know, all four areas. Um, we did uh, deal a little bit with the aquaculture part uh, possibility. Uh, we didn't have a lot of time to discuss it, but we brought up a little bit about what the site ought to include and uh, how some discussion on how large it might uh, conceivably be. But we agreed that it should be a statewide um, assessment, not predetermined to be a specific island, but uh, and that it wouldn't probably have a different focus to Nelha rather than, than being competition for Nelha. All right, thank you, Annie, Ron, and Fred. Okay, let's move on to room three, which is um, Dr. Lee, uh, Jen, John, Hi. and Uncle Wally. Guys, can I just say I've got to leave and I don't know how to do the text that everybody knows how to do because I'm that old. But <laughs> thank you for having me. Yeah, um, Mike, did you want to add your comments? You know, because... Um, no, my, you... my group pretty much said it all. You know, you guys are doing a great job and it's the first time I've ever heard of this. So thank you guys for doing all of this. Okay. Appreciate it. Okay, Mike, we'd love to have you back to talk about um, your work in processing. Okay, we'd love to. Okay, Take great. Care. Yeah, Thank you. Okay, so Dr. Lee, Jen, John, Uncle Wally. Um, uh, I'll just say what I think that um, since no one's jumping in, um, it seemed like the diagnostic lab was kind of forefront and top of mind and something that actually could be useful and actionable to the businesses that are already present. So supporting funding for that seemed quite important and was touched on most greatly. Um, and expanding that out, supporting it um, and expanding it out from beyond fish to microalgae and macroalgae, but first understanding that, you know, the current testing capabilities and making sure it's staffed is important. Um, and then I, I don't think this is, um, and then I'll just pass the mic right over to the other group, but um, I don't think this needs to be a draft, a priority, but just as an aside for, you know, we, um, when, when needed for this group to provide support to Nelha to um, get access to um, water um, through the OTO well. Um, uh, for businesses to grow, for more aquaculture to occur here, we you know we definitely need access to, to water. So just keeping that on everybody's radar. And it would probably look like something um, for funding for um, offshore water quality monitoring. That's one of the stipulations that's being asked in the contested case for the OTO well. All right, thanks so much, Jen. Okay, how about room four? So that was um, Darren, Jim, Maria, and Representative Caruso. Uh, I can comment on that. Uh, uh, Darren took notes, but he has to go because he's headed to another meeting at one. And uh, mostly we talked about workforce development because I think that was the area um, in terms of the legislative initiative from the collaborative that had the least amount of verbiage and attention. 
and uh, you know, it's the thing that uh, Maria is quite passionate about because they do a lot of that at uh, UH Hilo, and uh, she would very much like to contribute some language and so forth to uh, this initiative. Uh, Amy had commented that uh, Senator Dela Cruz seems to be really focused on community colleges as the source or the place to fund workforce development, uh, which you know sticks in the craw of the UH folks because they want to do it too. So, so there's a little bit of a uh, issue there. And uh, is Maria, Maria, are you still on this call, or it would be great if yes, you could? Yes, I'm. I'm here. If you if you could chime in and uh, and. Uh, give a few a few of the comments that you made during the thing, because I think those were excellent. I, I think you summed it up admirably. And I, I think the only thing I would add is that given that workforce development is a weird combination of industry, education, and multiple educational partners, I think that's something the group might want to look at doing some kind of subcommittee or intensive session. I won't say much more because we're going to run out of time, but I think it needs more hands to that whole issue to get a good language going that's feasible. Thanks, Jim. Yeah. Thanks, Maria. Okay, our final room was Dan, John, Vernon, and Eiffel. Yeah, I'll speak just very quickly. Um, and uh, Anthony dropped some ideas in the chat as well that we talked about. But for those of you who don't know me, I'm Dan Derger. I'm the Director of Workforce Innovation for the University of Hawaii Community College System. So our group also focused on workforce development because I was asking lots of questions as I was uh, trying to figure out um, pathways, not only um, in the higher ed world, but also the DOE, so that we could have a pathway that starts in the DOE schools and then uh, includes all higher ed, so the two and the four years, and what those funding sources might look like, but also how the experiences and the curriculum, how they might flow from one to the other. So I love Maria's idea about a subcommittee, and I would love to be a part of that. Thanks, Jean. Thank you, guys. Thank you guys so much. Okay, yes, and we are out of time today. Um, so we had some really great questions during our discussion. We're going to get those answers and get back to you, but we have some upcoming activities um, on this strategic type planning. So we're hoping to get HDOA to come talk about the ADP strategic plan next month. Um, please put this in your calendar and we'll send out an invitation soon, a uh, meeting with HDOA Sharon Hurd, the chair on August 3rd. And then of course the um, Thrive Hawaii Agri-Food Summit in September. So please mark those down. Um, we're gonna get your questions answered and we'll have next steps for you in our next communication. Um, but thank you so much for your time. Um, we're one o'clock on the nose and, and we just wanna thank you all so much. If you have additional comments, questions, please email us. All right, mahalo, aloha. Aloha. Thank you. Thank you. Aloha. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.